Okay, now we're going to go over a, this one will be a lot faster, but a quick tutorial on how to use the Bitcoin miner or BTC miner dot one. So the first thing that you're going to need is a uh, Scatter.js compatible wallet uh, or an EOS wallet compatible with Scatter.js. There are several of them like um, Token Pocket or Scatter or Meet One. Um, there's, there's a bunch of others too, but you'll need that first with an account. After you have that, simply go to btcminer.1. And once you do, you'll see this page uh, get pulled up. It'll redirect you to a GitHub site now, but pretty soon it'll just stay btcminer.1. Now you'll see uh, the stuff here, your balance, your resource percentage. Just click this. You don't do this until after you log in. The node, everything. You don't need to do anything with this yet. Okay. So just click log in. Okay. Boom. So I just logged in. You see my account name here, my balance of EOS, and it says balance undefined. That's for the PBTC. And the reason it's undefined is because I don't have any PBTC in this account and I've never had any. So the my, my account doesn't have the contract RAM or like it doesn't recognize the contract. So in order for that to happen, it, it's very simple. All you need to do is click mine 1x to initialize the miner. And what this will do is it'll mine one time and it'll send you some PBTC. And when it does that, uh, you'll get RAM as well to recognize the btc.p tokens contract. And you'll see. So let's, let's click here. Click. Okay. Real Elon Musk, mine BTC. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Let's whitelist this too. Okay. Boom. So you'll see that. Oh, that's nice. Looks like I got a little bit more than I expected. Well, you'll see that I right here ended up getting uh, 11 Satoshi and it instantly tells me the mining reward per transaction right now. It tells me my balance, it tells me all that good stuff. So now, you know, I don't have to worry about um, that stuff when I, when I log in or log out, it'll automatically see that I won't need to mine one time for it to, to see my stuff. Okay. So how this works too, is this is dynamic. It's, it's actually hooked up to POW and POW uh, issues new POW every 10 minutes. So it's actually kind of like a Bitcoin simulation. And then this is a simulation on top of a simulation. Um, so you'll see this actually peak every 10 minutes. It'll be like 20 something or 30 something. And then it'll go down quickly and then, you know, slowly until it goes down more and more and more and more and more before the new reward is printed every 10 minutes or is issued every 10 minutes and the mining picks back up pretty hot and heavy again, so to speak. But, you know, this is um, actually I was testing it. And when EOS was 6000 per EOS at the Rex, it was pretty profitable. You'll see it just changed to four from five because the difficulty went a little bit higher. So when I first bought, um, it was around 6,000 EOS CPU per EOS. Uh, and at that, it was, it was like three to four times more profitable than, than just, you know, depositing the Rex um, with that small amount. There was only like 10,000 EOS to CPU for that. So it wasn't, it wasn't too much. But it was like three to four times more profitable than what you would get from Rex. And that is with the setting of putting... 24 Satoshi minimum and mining at 2x. So what will happen is right now it's not mining. Whenever it mines, it's just like that first time I did it, you'll see these little little black bar progress. That's how you know you're mining. So when this reward prints, it's going to shoot up over 24 Satoshi again. And when that happens, because I have it clicked auto here and I have mine x2, it's going to fire off two mining swap transactions or two C C CPU atomic swap transactions in one bundle and it's going to mine until that reward goes below 24 Satoshi and then it's going to stop firing transactions. So some might still settle at a lower reward than 24 Satoshi because it's going to keep sending those transactions to confirm until the reward is below that. So, so there's a decent chance a few rewards will be, you know, there'll be a little bit of of a delay and you'll end up mining a bit 
below where you have it set a bit, and then it'll stop, obviously, because it stops firing transactions as soon as it goes below that. But you'll see this exasperated more so the higher you have the slider. The lower you have the slider, the less of that issue you're going to have. But the higher you have the slider, you're going to be jamming the node up a little bit more. Um, so there's a good chance that it's going to back up those transactions a bit, and it's going to take more time uh, for, for them to settle uh, beyond just where it stops from the reload. So we'll see that pretty soon. And sometimes you will see that because a lot of people are using the same node, that it'll get jammed up and you won't seem to be mining for whatever reason. And when that happens, click change node here and it'll switch from Aloha to EOS DAC and it'll try that node out. And then if you wanted to as well, if you had a preferred endpoint, you can enter that in and then click change node. And so you can enter in any, any uh, API endpoint. Um, here it doesn't really matter as long as it's connected in pushing transactions. So you can try different ones out if something becomes backed up or if you're having poor performance on a certain endpoint. That's what that's there for. So now we're just kind of we're just kind of chilling. We're waiting for the uh, there we go. So okay. I just started mining again. You'll see this. We'll go in and inspect the page, but yeah, first you'll see that it's it's going to start moving cuz the reward just fired off. And boom, I start mining. I'm mining, and then I'm going to stop mining now. But you'll see a couple more will probably process afterwards. It's just how it works. So it looks like it's basically stopped now. So we'll inspect. I'll show you the console. But so basically, what happened is you're logged in. The second that that pumped up, we have this array two calling this action two times. Success, success. Every time success, this moves. But you see, we already got, you know, we just mined a little bit, one round, one 10 minute round. And just with these settings, we already picked up 186 Satoshi. Pretty, pretty easily. You could have it, you know, anytime you rent from Rex, this happens all month. So you can stack up. I mean, you can stack up. You can, you know, at rates the way they are right now, it's not as profitable as the other day. That's another thing you have to keep an eye on when Rex rewards get really good. Um, you know, they're they're solid and you can rent more profitably at that time. If they're really bad, then, you know, you could rent and end up not being profitable and mining all month and not getting anything. So you got to keep an eye on that. You got to keep an eye on the reward. You got to keep an eye on your node. You know, it's it's definitely something that you can you can profit on and you can grow your EOS um, or grow your, your Bitcoin or PBGC. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's there's strategy involved and you can't just, you know, set it and walk away for a month. You know, it doesn't work like that. It's a little bit more active. So that's probably part of the reason why people put so much into Rex at lower rewards is they don't have to do anything at all. Whereas, you know, something like mining, there's, there's a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of setup and monitoring on the, on the user end. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so you can see right here, obviously, uh, we have an iPhone X. That's what it looks like on the iPhone X. Um, it's really set up to be mobile first, though it works fine on desktop too, as you guys can see. But it's really set up to be mobile first. iPhone X, it's, it's pretty much a perfect fit. And then the most common really is probably your iPhone 6, 7s, and 8s. And on that, it's really good too. I mean, all your buttons are on one screen. You know, iPad. Looks good on the iPad. Looks really good on the iPad. It's fun to play with on a tablet. Um, yeah, that, that's simple. That's the Bitcoin miner at btcminer.1. Uh, feel free to try it out. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have any suggestions. And uh, also, you know, drop by our SOV Telegram if you have any questions there too. And, you know, if I'm not around, there's a good chance somebody in the community is going to be able to, you know, get you the information you need really quickly. We're pretty active and we do our best to help everybody out as much as possible. But uh, thanks for taking the time to learn about BTCminer.1. And I hope uh, hope you guys have, have good luck mining. Take care.